Huawei's new domestic desktop, beyond the chip blockade. ARM desktops redefine tech resilience. Why Huawei chose Linux over Harmony OS for its new PCs. Kirin Chip, China-US tech rivalry, enterprise desktop alternatives. If you've ever struggled with a work laptop freezing mid-conference call, or waited endlessly for software to load on your office PC, you know how critical a stable desktop system is to daily productivity. What if I told you the next solution to that frustration might come from a Chinese tech giant navigating unprecedented global sanctions? That's the story behind Huawei's new Qingyun W515Y and W585Y desktops, devices that are quietly reshaping the rules of the global PC market. Western media often frames Huawei's tech moves as either a threat to global innovation or a desperate response to U.S. sanctions, reducing complex strategic decisions to geopolitical posturing. But if we shift from a politician's lens to an engineer's, we see something far more nuanced, a calculated attempt to build a resilient tech ecosystem that can withstand global disruptions, one component at a time. This isn't just about Huawei. It's about reimagining how critical tech infrastructure can be built. Today, I'll share three insights you can bring to your next industry discussion. First, why Huawei's choice of Linux over Harmony OS isn't a retreat but a masterstroke. Second, how the Kirin 9000X chip represents a new path for semiconductor innovation under pressure. Third, and this will change how you see tech competition, why ecosystem resilience is now more important than raw performance. Let's dive in. To understand Huawei's new desktops, we first need to look at similar attempts in the West. Just last year, German Linux manufacturer Tuxedo announced it was shutting down its ARM-based laptop project after investing 10 million euros and a 30-person team. The culprit? A broken ecosystem, from lagging GPU drivers that rendered 3D acceleration useless to power management issues that cut battery life to 3 hours and made sleep mode unreliable 40% of the time. It's a familiar story, ARM architecture dominates mobile, but x86's decades-long ecosystem lock-in has made desktop adoption a nightmare for most. Even with powerful hardware, without compatible software and drivers, a PC is little more than a fancy paperweight. This is the same challenge Huawei faces, yet its approach is fundamentally different. Tuxedo relied on Qualcomm's semi-open driver support and generic Linux distributions, while Huawei has paired its Kirin 9000X chip with two deeply customized domestic Linux systems, UOS V20 and Kylin V10. These aren't off-the-shelf solutions. They're tailored for enterprise and government use, prioritizing the stability and security that Tuxedo's project lacked. For context, enterprise desktops can't afford the trial and error of consumer devices. A single system crash could cost the company thousands in downtime or expose sensitive data. Huawei's choice to skip Harmony OS here isn't a rejection of its own system, but a recognition that Harmony OS is still focused on IoT and mobile, where its distributed architecture shines. In desktop, where legacy software compatibility is king, customized Linux is the safer, more pragmatic bet right now. Let's pause for a moment to think. The tuxedo failure and Huawei's strategy both highlight a key truth. Desktop success isn't about hardware alone, it's about ecosystem synergy. We often fixate on chip specs, but software and integration are the invisible glue that makes a PC work. This is why Apple's ARM-based Mac succeeded. Apple controls every link from chip to OS to software, allowing for seamless optimization. Huawei's move shows it's learned this lesson, even as it operates in a far more constrained environment. Now, let's break down the technical paths, China's approach versus the West's. Western desktop ecosystems, led by Intel slash AMD and Windows slash Mac OS, are built on x86's CISC architecture, complex instruction sets that have accumulated decades of optimized code for every imaginable hardware peripheral. It's a wall of tens of millions of lines of driver code, making compatibility nearly universal but innovation slow. China's path, centered on ARM's RISC architecture, the same as Apple's M-series, prioritizes energy efficiency and customization. The Kirin 9000X is an 8-core, 16-thread chip with a max frequency of 2.5 GHz, inheriting ARM's power-saving advantages, 
critical for desktops that run 24-7 in offices. But unlike Apple, which controls its entire ecosystem, Huawei is building a collaborative ecosystem with domestic OS developers and hardware partners. The hardware design of the Qingyun W515Y and W585Y further underscores this enterprise focus. Up front, you'll find Type-C, multiple USB ports, and a classic audio jack, standard for modern users. But the back panel tells the real story. It's packed with ports, including serial and VGA connectors, relics of the last century that are still essential for industrial machines and legacy office equipment. Huawei didn't just build a PC for the future, it built one that works with the past. Add an LPDDR5X quad-channel memory and a hybrid HDD plus SSD storage setup, and you have a machine optimized for multitasking and large file handling, exactly what enterprises need. This isn't just a domestic PC, it's a targeted solution for a market where legacy compatibility and reliability trump cutting-edge specs. The contrast in innovation ecosystems is equally stark. In the West, PC innovation is driven by market competition and venture capital. Companies chase consumer demand for thinner, faster devices, and ecosystems expand organically through developer partnerships. In China, the government plays a more active role as a catalyst and customer. State policies prioritize domestic substitution in critical tech, and government agencies are major early adopters of domestic desktops, providing a stable customer base while the ecosystem matures. Huawei's R&D investment reflects this. It spends over 20% of its revenue on R&D annually, over 500 million yuan per day, and has funded hundreds of domestic suppliers through its Hubble investment arm. This top-down plus market-driven approach accelerates ecosystem building, but it also comes with pressure to deliver results quickly. Let's pause again. The debate isn't about which ecosystem model is better, it's about which is more resilient in a fragmented global tech landscape. The West's market-driven model excels at rapid consumer innovation, but it's vulnerable to supply chain disruptions, think of the global chip shortage a few years back. China's model, built in response to sanctions, prioritizes self-reliance, but it risks inefficiency without market competition. Both have trade-offs and the outcome will shape the future of global tech supply chains. Now, the geopolitical elephant in the room, chip production. The Kirin 9000 XS predecessor, the Kirin 9000, was manufactured by TSMC using 5 nanometers EUV lithography, until US sanctions cut off that supply in 2020. Today, Huawei relies on SMIC, China's top chip maker. SMIC has made progress. It's mass-produced 14 nanometers FinFET chips and even achieved 7 nanometers production using alternative technologies, though its yield rate, 34 to 37 percent, is still far below TSMC's. This is a critical constraint. Advanced nodes like 3 nanometers and 5 nanometers drive half of global wafer revenue in 2025, but SMIC can't access the EUV lithography machines needed for these processes. However, desktop PCs don't need the extreme performance of mobile or AI chips. 7 nanometers or even 14 nanometers is sufficient for most office tasks. This is Huawei's side door. Instead of competing head-on with Intel slash AMD on cutting edge, it's targeting the low to mid enterprise market where its current chip capabilities are adequate. The global impact of this strategy extends far beyond China. For developing countries, a resilient, Lower-cost domestic desktop ecosystem could reduce reliance on expensive Western hardware and software licenses. Many emerging economies struggle with the high cost of Windows and Intel-based PCs, which limits digital inclusion. Huawei's model, if successful, could offer an alternative that's both affordable and secure. Additionally, ARM's energy efficiency could lower the carbon footprint of enterprise ID, critical as the world tackles climate change. A typical x86 enterprise PC uses 50 to 100 watts under load, while ARM-based systems can cut that by 30 to 50 percent. Scaled across millions of offices, that's a significant reduction in energy use and emissions. But challenges remain, and here's the cognitive turning point. Pricing will be as important as technology. Huawei hasn't announced prices yet, but in the enterprise market, value beats specs. 
if the Qingyun series can match x86 PCs in reliability while undercutting them on price, and leverage government security mandates, it could capture a large share of China's massive enterprise and government market. Brand recognition is already on Huawei's side, after regaining the top spot in China's smartphone market in 2025 with its Kirin 9020 chip, it has the trust of domestic buyers. The bigger question is long-term scalability. Can SMIC ramp up production and improve yield rates to meet demand? As of 2025, SMIC holds 6% of the global wafer foundry market, up from previous years, but it's still behind TSMC and Samsung. Every percentage point of yield improvement reduces costs and makes Huawei's desktops more competitive. I know some of you might be thinking, is this just a nationalist project that will fade once sanctions ease? It's a fair question. But the data suggests otherwise. China's domestic wafer foundry market is growing at 10.5% annually, reaching 102.6 billion yuan in 2025, driven by real demand for secure, local tech. Sanctions accelerated this trend, but the genie is out of the bottle. Domestic tech suppliers that once relied on foreign partners are now capable of standing on their own. Even if sanctions ease, enterprises and governments will likely maintain dual supply chains to avoid future disruptions. Huawei's desktops aren't just a response to sanctions. They're a hedge against global tech volatility.